If you are a thriller movie enthusiast, then this psychological film full of surprise and crazy situations could be your next target to watch. Welcome to Kaylee King. Today I will talk about a movie from 2010 titled, Shutter Island, full of thrillers drama and action all compressed into one. So without further ado, let's get started. U.S. Marshal Edward Teddy Daniels travels through the water to a mental facility across the island. He gets seasick and repeatedly vomits on the ship. He visits the toilet and then goes to meet his new partner. His partner, Chuck All, introduces himself to her. They talk for a bit. In their conversation, Teddy talks about his wife, who died from fire smoke. They arrive at the mental facility, a hospital for the criminally insane at Shutter Island. Upon reaching there, they are welcomed by Deputy Marshal McPherson, who insists the Marshal agents must drop their guns with the security. He tells them there are three wards Ward A, which belongs to the male patient, and Ward B, which belongs to the female, and Ward C is a special ward for unrepentant criminals, which the marshal must not get to. He takes them to the psychiatrist, Dr. John Colley. Colley explains that the escaped patient was a war widow who drowned her three kids in the water one after the other. The patient, Rachel Salando, drowned her kids, kept their corpses by the kitchen table, and even ate beside them, throughout her stay in the facility. She never believed her children were dead, and she never accepted she was at a facility. She created a world for herself where she saw all the workers at the facility as her maids. As Teddy hears the story, he gets a migraine and asks Kali for drugs. They go to check Rachel's room, and the doctor insists Rachel was brought into the room the night before. They find Rachel's shoes in the room, and the doors and windows are unbroken. Teddy finds a letter that Kali insists is Rachel's handwriting, and he takes it. He searches the walkway Rachel was to pass out of the hospital. He asks for all the staff's information, but Kali refuses to release it. Rather he says he will call a meeting with the staff after dinner. After dinner, Teddy attends the meeting and asks if Rachel did any abnormal thing during her last therapy section. They tell him the therapy was held by Rachel's main therapist, Dr. Sheehan, and the therapist has gone on vacation. He requests to speak with the doctor. But due to the weather, they cannot make a call. Kali takes them to Dr. Nayering. While in the hall, he remembers all his war memories, and memories about his wife keep coming back. They ask Nayering for the staff records, and Nayering refuses to release them, angrily. Teddy says that they are leaving the facility the next day and they will report the search as closed. As they return to their hotel room, Chuck asks Teddy if he is sure they are closing the investigation. He says that the doctors are lying and there is no way Rachel left the facility without help. As he sleeps, he dreams about his wife and wakes him up thinking of her aches, the heavy rain, so they could not leave the facility that morning. He goes to Kali and asks to interview the patients. They allow him he interviews his first patient, who he asks about a patient named Andrew Latus. Immediately he mentions this patient's name, and the man gets irrational and leaves. He talks with another patient, Kearns who is receptive to speaking to him. He asks Kearns about Sheehan, and Kearns gives a good report about the doctor. She also writes a note asking him to run when his partner is away. However, when he asks her about Andrew Latus, she irrationally stands to leave. As they finish the interview, Chuck asks him who Andrew is. He says Andrew was the one who set his house on fire and killed his wife. However, Andrew wasn't punished. A year ago, he found out Andrew had committed another arson and he is at Shutter Island. However, Andrew vanished as if he never existed, and there is no record of him. He says that, just like Rachel, something is wrong in that facility, and it may be Ward C, Chuck's. However, he asks him what he will do if he finds Andrew. He says he doesn't want to kill Andrew. He says the facility is funded by the House Un-American Activities Committee, and he suspects it is being used for experiments on humans. He says he tried to get information about the facility. But no one wanted to talk until he met a former patient. The former patient, George Noyce, was a patient at the facility, and he was a patient in Ward C. He was released after a year, and when he returned, he entered a bar and shot three people. The lawyer attempts to plead insanity, but he refuses. He begs the judge that he would prefer to die than return to any facility center. He meets George at the prison, and he hears from George that they are using them for experiments at the facility. He says coming to the facility is an opportunity. But Chucks ask him if he is sure it isn't a trap. Chucks says the government might have known about his search. 
which is why they sent him to the island. McPherson comes to their hideout and drives them away. Back into the facility, they listen to a conversation among the doctors and figure there are 66 patients at the hospital. He relates it to Rachel's note, but Kali tells him Rachel is back. He interviews Rachel, who mistakes him to be her dead husband, and attacks him. Teddy remembers his war memories, develops migraines, uses drugs, and sleeps. He gets several horrible nightmares. As he awakes, the flooding has affected the facility's electricity. Chuck suggests it's a good day to visit Ward B, and they attempt to go there. As they get there, a patient attacks Teddy. He fights the patient back, and Chuck takes the patient to the infirmary. While walking around Ward C, he sees George Noyce. George accuses him of bringing him back. He says he is back because the government knows all of Teddy's activities, and Teddy will never leave the island alive. He tells Teddy that he isn't alone and anyone around him can be used against him, before leaving. George tells him Andrew may most likely be at the lighthouse. Chucks arrive, and Teddy gets suspicious of him. He accuses Chucks of wanting to betray him, and he asks to visit the lighthouse alone. He finds a cave filled with rats and sees a woman there. He recognizes her to be the real Rachel. Rachel says she was never married, nor did she have a child, however, she was a former doctor on the island. She notices they are manipulating the patient's brain on the island and speaks out, turning her into a crazy person. She tells Teddy they won't let him leave, she asks if he has taken any drug, food, or cigarette from the collie, and he replies affirmatively. She informs him they will use his trauma against him and turn him into a patient. She tells him about the activities at the lighthouse and how they experiment on human brains. She tells him there is no way he will leave the facility as the facility controls all the fairies. He returns to the facility where he meets Kali. He asks Kali about his partner. But Kali says he has no partner. He goes to have his bath. And as he is about to leave, Nayering tries to sedate him. He overpowers Nayering, escapes from the facility, and tries to get to the lighthouse. Upon getting there, he meets Kali and doesn't see any other patients. Kali tells him he is delusional. He says no Andrew exists, and he is, in fact, the Andrew that killed his wife after his battle trauma. Kali calls in Chucks, who is, in fact, Dr. Sheehan. He claims to be Teddy's doctor for about two years. Teddy finds his gun and attempts to shoot at them. It turns out his gun is fake, so he attacks Chucks. Kali comes to him with pictures of three children and tells him he killed his wife after his wife drowned their three kids, after several injections and drugs. At a later time, Teddy confesses to being Andrew and says he was the one who killed his wife because his wife killed his children. He narrates that he created Andrew and Rachel in his mind because he wants to avoid reality. After this confession, Kali tells him he had been cured about nine months ago, but he relapsed. He asks him to accept the reality of who he is, and Teddy affirms it too. At a later time, Teddy sits by the facility, and Chucks comes to him. He asks Chucks when they will leave the island, and they admit they are smarter than the doctors. Ending the movie, he asks Chucks which is better between living as a monster or die as a good man. Chucks don't give a response as he walks away with the orderlies. Thanks for watching. Kindly subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post the next recap. See you next time.